You may see. Ready? Yeah, you're good. You're you good. may see a multiple choice question or two with some curves asking you what would the government need to do to shift aggregate demand from the first curve to the second curve, for example. There are a couple of different options here. Essentially what we want, and this is not the Keynesian aggregate supply, but I wanted to show it to you the other way you might see it. What you might say is, all right, if we want to increase spending, which is what we're doing when we're shifting aggregate demand out, then what are some monetary or fiscal policies that will increase spending? What you want to shoot for, if we want people to spend more money, are the expansionary policies. That would mean increasing the money supply or increasing government spending or decreasing taxes. This is your monetary policy. This is your fiscal policy. Those would all be things that you would do in some combination. Now, you're not necessarily going to see a question that's written in a manner this straightforward. My guess would be that's a long shot. So what you might see is a question about, say, government entitlement programs or government transfer payments or um, unemployment benefits, or you might see something dealing with various kinds of taxes. But anything changing government spending or taxes is fiscal. If it's the money supply, then that's going to be a little bit more straightforward. Now, increasing the money supply would mean buying bonds, lowering the discount rate, or lowering the reserve requirement. Those would be other options. But you want some combination of these things in order to increase aggregate demand. To get it to go left, it would be the opposite of all this. You'd go contractionary. And if you can do one, you can do the other. Another thing that you might need to do is go from short run to long run with ADAS. Now, in the short run, aggregate supply slopes upward. Because what's going to happen is that as the price level changes, you're moving along points here on aggregate supply. Let's say, for example, we have demand pull inflation, which means that aggregate demand is going to the right, pulling the price level up. So what do we see? We see that we're now moving between these two points in aggregate supply. Now, what's going to happen over time is that as wages are pulled up to adjust with prices, that aggregate supply is actually going to slide to the left. You're going to see this backwards forwards adjustment with aggregate supply over time as we move from short run to long run. So that what happens is that in the long run, aggregate supply does not slope upward anymore. It's going to be vertical. And if you have to put these together on one graph, your equilibrium between aggregate demand and aggregate supply in the short run will also be your equilibrium with long run aggregate supply. This is short run. This is long run. That's how you put those together. One cause of inflation is an increase in aggregate demand. The other one, which is worse, is a decrease in aggregate supply. Now, what could cause that is what we call a negative supply shock. I've never heard it called a positive supply shock. It's pretty much always a bad thing. When gas prices start to jump up, this qualifies as a negative supply shock. Now, why is that? It's one product. The problem is that so much stuff is moved on vehicles that use gasoline that a very big jump in gas prices can affect the price of everything else. So this is really the one example, if you're talking
talking about energy prices of one market causing inflation for the whole economy. And this is why people get really nervous when they start seeing changes in oil prices and gas prices like we've had in, say, the past couple of years. Now, how to represent that graphically? We said with demand pull inflation, that aggregate demand would slide out and cause prices to be pulled up. With a negative supply shock, this is cost push inflation because we are pushing aggregate supply back. You pull this out, you push him back. Two completely different things that can have the same basic effect. So, if aggregate supply slides to the left, we see higher prices, we see lower output. What do we see happening with gasoline right now? We see things like the cost of produce increasing because produce has moved on trucks. We see people being laid off because it's costing too much for supplies for some of these businesses they're having to let their workers go. So that's an example of how, again, one market can impact everything else. This is why people get so upset about gas price fluctuations when they keep going up.